Now, from CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Welcome to Facing South Florida. I'm Jim DeFeedy, and following the leak of the Supreme Court decision that shows the court is about to strike down Roe versus Wade, I found myself trying to decide if I was shocked by the justices obliterating a 50-year-old precedent, or if I kind of expected it, because the religious right has been so single-minded on abortion that they looked past everything they supposedly loathed about Donald Trump because they knew he would appoint justices who would take away a woman's right to control her own body. Three of the five votes to overturn Roe were from Trump appointees. Now, elections have consequences, the saying goes, and while Democrats argued and feuded among themselves in 2016 about whether they liked Hillary Clinton enough to vote for her, Republicans were marching in lockstep to this very day. And so here we are. Does this reshape the upcoming elections? I'm not sure, but we will soon see. I spoke this week with State Senator Lauren Book and asked her for her reaction to the court's pending decision. This is a really terribly sad and, and dangerous day for women all across our country um, and here in the state of Florida. You and I have been talking, Jim, for a long time about the fact that we were looking at a post-Roe world and marching towards that place. And here we are. And let's make no mistake about it. That's where we're going to be. Um, in the state of Florida, obviously we know, and we've talked a lot about um, the abortion ban um, that has come down, that will take effect July the 1st. Uh, and so that your viewers know, again, July the 1st, you will not be able to seek an abortion past 15 weeks unless there is a fatal fetal abnormality. And again, as we've discussed, no exemption for rape, incest, or victims of human trafficking, which um, I know that we've talked a lot about too, the face of the Republican Party and the types of policies um, that they are putting forward. Um, and this is a very dangerous day. And I am under no illusion that this is where this is gonna stop. Do you think it's possible to, that the governor may even call another special session just to put on the record a complete ban on abortion? I, I would not put it past him and nothing at this point would surprise me. We know that the House sponsor of the bill as well as the Senate sponsor and leadership in both, um, both bodies have talked about the fact and bemoaned the fact that it was only a 15 week ban, um, that it was a moderate ban on abortion. Um, and we, we all know that, that there is no moderate ban on abortion, particularly when there are no exemptions for rape, incest, and survivors of human trafficking. Um, but they have talked very openly about um, a six or eight week abortion ban, and, and that is a wish and a desire um, in, in both chambers and quite frankly, on the plaza level. And so I am, I, I am gearing up for what that is. But I think it's important, and we've talked a lot today to Planned Parenthood, constituents, and allied organizations, and it's important for your viewers to know that if they have appointments at a Planned Parenthood or a reproductive health care center throughout the state of Florida or in South Florida, keep your appointments. Call if you have questions. Nothing today is going to stop your ability to seek care. And that is a really important thing. Um, there are 13 states in the country that have um, these trigger bans that once this decision, if it does come down, um, would stop all of, of, of the abortions that are um, that, that follow the law in each of those states. Florida is not one of those, um, but that law would become the law of the land on that July 1st date if this decision comes down. How much of this is going to change the political landscape in terms of the elections that are going to be held six months from now, both at the state and federal level? You know, I, I think that when we've pulled this issue, particularly, and, and, I, and I focus on this issue because it is, um, you know, something that I've experienced as a, a survivor of sexual assault, 77% of, of, of individuals across the state, Republican, NPAs, and Democrats believe that there should be an exemption for rape, incest, and survivors of human trafficking. This is, is a, not a winning issue. However, I do believe that because um, we've got the House, the Senate, um, under complete Republican control with a governor who has ambitions to run for higher office and, and pushing and pushing more to the right each and every day um, with that predominant belief of because we can, um, this is something that, that we have found and seen that they are going to continue to push. Um, but I do believe that there will be a day of reckoning where people um, 
say enough is enough. This is too far. Uh, certainly, it has galvanized a tremendous amount of support um, it, in our communities. We're seeing all throughout the week where we have had um, different gatherings, rallies, marches um, to try to combat some of the things that are, are happening and for people to pay attention to this issue. I do think that this is one of those sea change moments where you have daughters, you have granddaughters, wives, <laughs> mothers. This is not just about the you know, an abortion conversation of yesteryear. Um, this is, you are taking away a survivor's right. And like, what is the face of the Republican Party today? You have covered extensively one of, um, one of the members of the Florida Senate who has openly talked about the fact that um, we are doing a favor, if you will, to survivors and victims of human trafficking by disallowing them to seek an abortion at that point from a Planned Parenthood because we make them less marketable to, to, to their clientele and their pimps won't use them in that way. This is the face of the Republican Party in 2022. You're talking about the race that is now shaping up between State Representative Michael Greco, the Democrat, who supports uh, reproductive rights, and Ileana Garcia, the state, the current state senator, who has said she su would support an outright ban on abortion. Do, do you think that this immediately recast that race into into an issue predominantly about this, about abortion? I think that this be casts a very large shadow and becomes and sucks a lot of the, the air out of of the room, if it were. And I also believe we're not going to. In other words, we're we're, we're done talking about critical race theory and or math textbooks and and all the all the sort of games that the Republicans did during during the session that that was good for their base. This is an issue now that really cuts to the heart that that moderate Republicans, independents and Democrats should be able to galvanize around. I believe that to be the case, and particularly with this conversation and, and this member in particular, and if you go back and you listen to and you watch the debate on the floor, um, Senator Garcia talked a lot about and compared back alley abortions to getting plastic surgery in a parking garage. Let's not make a mistake about what's happening here. Abortions have always existed, they have always existed, and they always will exist. It's will they be safe and who will have access to them? She compared it to some sort of a strange plastic surgery in a parking garage while then also talking about survivors of human trafficking. At the end of the day, you are taking away not only a woman's right to choose, whether that's because there is a, an, a, an intended pregnancy and they find out past the 15 weeks that there was some sort of a fetal abnormality or it doesn't fit into somebody's life for whatever reason she decides that it doesn't. You're talking about and continuing on a path um, of if you've been raped, if you've been sexually assaulted, if you're a victim of human trafficking, if you haven't made that decision by 15 weeks, forget you, move on, too bad, so sad. That is, I believe, and, and, and the numbers show, not where Floridians are. That's not where people are across the country. Have you gotten any indication as to whether or not the Florida Constitution may give greater protection for privacy rights that would allow abortion to continue in Florida? Because the, the U.S. Supreme Court seems to be in its decision saying privacy is not a valid enough reason from the constitutional standpoint to uphold Roe versus Wade. Does the Florida Constitution offer greater protection? Unfortunately, it does not. And we know that the ACLU has moved forward with a, a lawsuit. And again, I am not an attorney. Um, however, we do know that it will not provide that level of protection. Um, and so the 15 week ban will be the law of the land. And there's not much more um, that, that, that a woman could do at that point. Well, let's also, let's also talk about the possible ramifications of what this decision will mean in a broader sense. Because if the U.S. Supreme Court now is going to strike down the notion of privacy as being a legitimate reason for, for having an abortion, if you remove privacy out of the picture, privacy was also the basis for the Oberfeld decision in 2015, which legalized gay marriage, the 2000 or the 1967 decision, um, Loving uh, versus Virginia, which allowed interracial marriages, that was based on privacy. 
1965, there was a decision that allowed families and, and, and husband and wives to make decisions about contraception. Even the basics of contraception was based on privacy. Could you, for, could, is it possible that we could see some of those other rights now under attack, whether it's gay marriage, the rights of contraception, interracial marriage, if those are all based on, on privacy rights that the U.S. Supreme Court says are no longer valid, then are those at risk? I believe it is all at risk. And again, I am not an attorney, but what I would suggest to you is, um, and we alluded to it a minute ago, you do get, um, elections have consequences, right? And the governor has made it no secret that he wants the judges he wants to uphold and do what he chooses to do, um, whether it's, you know, all the way across the board. At the end of the day, I do believe that all of those, all of those things are at risk. And this is, this is, these are those high stakes that we've been talking about. I mean, again, sometimes people make it sound like these are talking points to get people frenzied before elections or for fundraising. This is where we are. There is, there is no room for games and no margin for error. 